you you weren't going to have any kind of limits, no snap count. We we heard you weren't going to have any limits, no snap count against Oklahoma State. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, how healthy, how healthy do you feel right now? Uh, Honestly, I feel pretty good, pretty healthy. Um, Just been staying in the trainer's room and continuing to get rehab every day and just trying to get better and continue to stay healthy. Obviously, your confidence is always tested with a big injury. You know, when you go out there on the field, how confident are you cutting on that knee? Uh, I'm definitely confident um, in everything I do just because I'm able to go out there and practice and make those cuts I want to make and um, just be confident in uh, the plays I get. And um, just one thing I've been working on uh, that I still need to continue to work on is just um, playing multiple downs and um, just work on conditioning. That's uh, one key, key point I think I need to work on. As you guys have gone back and watched the film, what hasn't been working in the running game in the last couple of weeks? Um, I mean, as, as we're watching the film, uh, there's definitely just little, little minor, minor errors in each play, uh, just little blocks that we probably miss or probably some runs that we miss as running backs. Um, just that cut back lane or, um, yeah. And last one for me, especially in offense that relies so heavily on RPOs, why is it so important to get the running game going? Um, it's definitely important to get the run game going, uh, to just establish a run. Uh, so the safeties are able to bite down and come in a box and we're able to uh, throw that RPO right behind that safety. So uh, it's definitely important to get something going in the beginning of the game uh, so we're able to get that momentum going. Thanks, George. Good luck this week. Appreciate it. How are you doing, George? Good, and yourself? I'm good, thanks. Um, George, when Andy Avalos was saying that you were on a little bit of a pitch count, he did mention that, you know, they had to get you back in, in terms of your conditioning. So uh, you touched on it just a second ago, but um, how, how important is that and is being in shape in, in this offense different than maybe being in shape in another offense? Um, it's definitely important because, uh, especially with this offense, because uh, just the tempo that we, ru- that we run, it's fast paced offense. And we're like one of the fastest offenses in the co- country that's operating like about like 16 seconds per play, which is really fast. Um, and I think it's really important uh, just to stay, uh, st- you know, stay conditioned and be able to go out and run the routes I need to run and be available when the quarterback needs me. Um, George, what is the spark that the ground game needs at this point in time? I mean, talking with you and your linemen, it, it seems like everybody's pretty much on the same page, but like what gets you over the hump? Like what's, what's the spark this ground game needs? Um, just definitely, we definitely, as the offense just needs to finish, you know, um, we, we start off uh, first and fourth, first and second quarter and um just coming in that third and fourth quarter we got to have uh that mental toughness to uh be relentless uh just be able to go out there and finish finish runs finish blocks and uh, just be the most physical team out there I mean, you guys really haven't had that much of a problem starting games, but you're, you're right. Once it, it gets into that third quarter, it seems like something disappears for you. So how have you guys addressed that this week? Uh, just just going hard in practice, uh, having that relentless drive, like I said, uh, just having a, a mentality where we're not letting up, even when, uh, when we're up, uh, not taking our foot off the gas and just being able to control the clock by – by running the ball and being able to get first first downs and um, just winning up front in the line of scrimmage. I don't know for me, George. Um, I, I know that stats don't always, I don't know, line up with, with what you're, you guys are trying to do or whatever, but like if you look at what Tim Plow did at, at UC Davis, he was an offensive coordinator there. Running backs as a group averaged right around six catches for 50 yards a game. and. At the moment, Boise State running backs are, are at about half that. So um, how, how do you uh, – do the running backs need to get a little more involved in the passing game or 
and if so, like, why are, why are you guys important to the RPO offense when it comes to even the passing attack? I mean, as running backs, we just got to be um, more urgent. We got to have more urgency with checking the pass pro and making sure no, no linebackers come and just being a, able to get out quicker. Um, that's something we definitely been working on and just also being patient in the, in the past game to make sure everything up front is clear and cleaned up, uh, making sure we get chips on DNs, taking ribs um, before we get out. So we got to just make sure everything is clear before we get out, be available. Taking ribs? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, George. No problem. Hey, George, how's it going? Good, and yourself? I'm doing good, thanks. Um, conference play starting on Saturday. How, how uh, nice is it for you guys to kind of, you know, wipe the slate uh, clean, so to speak, and have a fresh start here to conference play? And how important is conference play for you guys? Um, it's definitely – every every game is definitely important, um, especially going into conference play. Uh, we just got to be able to respond and um, just come out fast, fast, and uh, just be able to uh, – go one and oh each week. So that's, that's definitely important. I know you're getting asked a lot about the running game and stuff, but I mean, how, how surprising is it? How perplexing is it to you guys? That it's not been better when you look at the running backs you have and the linemen you have, I mean, what, what, I assume you guys didn't expect us to be still asking you about this, you know, three, four weeks into the season. Um, it's definitely difficult, uh, and frustrating as running backs and, uh, but we know it'll, it'll take time. We just got to be patient with this uh, run game. Uh, we know each week that it's getting better. Um, and we're definitely developing in the, in the run game. And um, I would say it's, it's different each week just because this week we came out with a lot of energy, willing to get better. And um, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see the guys go out there and uh, just wanting to get better and having a purpose that we know we need to establish this run game. We've been learning a lot about the RPO offense, obviously, and a lot of it comes from Hank's perspective, whether or not he's going to pull it or give it to you, you know, you backs. What's it like from the running back perspective where you're not sure when you grab that ball if you're going to get ripped out by Hank or not to throw it? I mean, what's that like as a running back in, in an RPO offense? Um. We, we got to trust Hank, you know, we all trust Hank uh, to, to either give it to us what, what he sees, what his reads are. So we let, we let Hank do his thing, but uh, as running backs, we just got to get every opportunity, take advantage of every opportunity we get. Uh, every, every, every carry we get, we, we got to go full speed. We got to hit it like we're not going to get the ball again. So we got to just go full speed every play. Is that a little different or harder though? Like on a normal carry where you know you're getting it and there's the ball and you grab it and go. I mean, do you have to approach it any differently when you're waiting to see if Hank's going to rip it back out? I mean, does that do anything to to you know limit your your burst or or how you're hitting the holes? No. So as running backs, we're we're able to uh, just know if Hank's going to pull it or hand it off because he usually pushes it into our chest or something like that. But if he's going to pull it, he kind of just like like he's he's light with it. We're not really we're not really getting it. So he's able to just, we know he's going to pull it. So we just carry out our fake and trying to pick up anything uh, that shows up in our face. Cool, man. Thanks. Good luck on Saturday. I appreciate you. George, the running game is such a big thing between both the offensive line and the running back. If, if one thing from both of you, from the running backs and from the uh, line could be improved this week, what would you want it to be in the game? Um, I would say just, just handling the front, just, um, making sure we get, get the, uh, that backside, uh, cut off with the tight ends too. Every, I mean, every, it takes everyone, O-line, tight ends, running back, just being for us running backs, we got to be more patient, uh, just being able to have that vision to hit the hole when we got to go and just trusting our O-line to, uh, handle the front and get to the second level. Uh, and as running backs, we just got to trust that and make sure we uh, just hit it full speed. And when we get that opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one with safeties, we make a miss and we go score. What's your impression of Utah State's defense against the run? 
Um, Utah State, they're definitely uh, uh, a big pressure team. They they bring a lot of pressure. Um, they're 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 D line. They're a little light up front. Um, so hopefully we're able to get get after these guys and uh, just come out uh, fast, fast and physical. Thanks, George. Good luck this week. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. George, what was it like seeing Cyrus get in the end zone the other night? Uh, it was really exciting, um, especially uh, his first touchdown as a Bronco. Um, it was it was definitely great uh, just to have him over there and finally get his first touchdown. Um, I'm over there trying to get my handshake in with him. He's a little he's a little tired, but and excited. But um, it's definitely a great experience, especially for him. Um, is his first touchdown as a Bronco, um, and there's definitely going to be many more. Um, but we, as running backs, we expect that. We expect to get in the end zone um, when we're in the goal line, red zone. As running backs, we, we all have, have to have that mentality where we're going to get in there no matter what. When we were talking with Coach Plow earlier this week, he mentioned regarding the run game and the struggles early on that you guys are close to, to punching off some big runs. What gives you confidence that you guys are close? Um, just the, the, uh, just how we prepare our practice and how we execute plays, um, and just seeing how the O-line work up front and the, them just fixing those mistakes that, that happen in the game, just being able to adapt and adjust really quick. And then we're able to respond and go, uh, just attack. Early kickoff Saturday. You like early kickoffs? Uh, I mean... Yeah, I don't I don't mind early kickoffs just because we have the rest of the day after that just to uh, get the bodies right, uh, get the get the mind right and just kind of get treatment. But, yeah, I don't I don't mind early kickoffs at all. It's just uh, probably just the waking up part is going to suck. But, well, we're used to that. We do that every day. Uh, wake up around six o'clock, five thirty every day. So we're just used to that. George, Utah State, and I know you've seen the film, they've struggled to stop the run this year. They're given 5.8 yards per carry, um, 37 carries a game so far, 217 yards per game. What what have they not been doing well that you think is going to help open things up for you guys? Um, uh, I feel like as an offense, uh, as a – yeah – as an offense, uh, our line would definitely uh, definitely come in there with the same mentality as we always do to get good push up front. Um, sometimes they're D line D linemen; they stand up. Sometimes so uh, they don't they don't get as much uh, pressure. So just being able to have uh, that good um, get off as the O lineman and for running backs to see those a lot of open gaps and be able to press it and cut it back. It definitely be uh, a lot of good runs and for the running backs. Coach Plow said earlier this week they just got to do a better job of putting the ball in your hands. I mean, the third quarter they only ran you know six plays or whatever. They weren't able to do that. What has he said to you in those regards when you're talking with your offensive coordinator and their strategies to to find better ways to to put the ball in your hands? Um. We just been putting in new plays and stuff, just being able to also trust uh, the plays that Plow puts in for us because uh, in his offense, we got to be able to trust each other and um, and trust in ourselves to hit hit the right the right gaps and um, just make dudes miss. George, I've heard running backs say it's one of those positions you want to be able to get in a rhythm and to get in a rhythm, you need touches, you need to feel things out. You haven't had 15 carries in a game since the Mountain West Championship against Hawaii. Do you think you need this to kind of get George Halani going again, just a game where you get 15-plus touches? Is that important for you as a back to be able to get into that rhythm? Um, I definitely think it's having a rhythm and getting into your flow uh, as an offense or any position is important. Um, But – if if we're 
out there, you know, throwing and we're getting the the gains that we need uh, on offense, throwing the ball, then I don't mind. Honestly, I just got to do my part as, on this offense and contribute when I when I get the ball. Hey, thanks, man. Good luck. Sir, I appreciate you. All right, George, thank you so much and good luck on Saturday. Hey, thank you.